Hi everyone, I'm Shelly from There's No Place Like Home at redheadmommy.wordpress.com. Well, Harvard it is at it again with its attacks on homeschooling. And when I actually saw this latest article over the weekend, I was really debating whether or not I wanted to address it on my channel because I'm sure that it is just spouting the same worldview that the article that was talking about the, the homeschooling summit that's coming up at Harvard in June. I figured it was just the same ideology that's coming out of that. And it is because you will notice that the person that's highlighted in this article is the person who is organizing the Harvard summit against homeschooling in June. But after I thought about it for a while, I realized that even though I don't want my channel to be just about me constantly complaining about certain groups or individuals. I do think it's important that we know our enemy and that we know what we're up against because these people are not going away anytime soon. And as I've been saying over and over and over again, we need to speak up. So now Harvard Magazine it, it says that it is an editorial um, publication, you know, which means that it is the opinion of people that's being written about. But what you will not see, at least that I have noticed in any of these publications from Harvard, is that they do not have um, both sides of the issue being shown. Lately, it has been attack after attack against homeschooling and it, it really needs to be addressed and more homeschoolers and people who just love freedom in general need to know about this. So this latest article is called The Risks of Homeschooling. And what I want you to notice right away is the graphic that they used for this. So what they want you to think is that in that house with the bars is a homeschooled child. While all of the school children are out and about running around, jumping rope, um, there's soccer ball that looks like they're playing hide and seek there. And I, when I first looked at this graphic, I couldn't believe the irony in it because that is the exact opposite of reality because it is not the homeschoolers who are locked inside a building all day long. It is those school students. So while the school students are stuck inside the classroom for seven hours a day, it is those homeschoolers who are able to be outside running around and playing. And you know, I've experienced this with my own children. My kids, when whenever we walk past a school, they call it jail for kids because that is what it feels like for them. My kids, while they're while the neighbor kids are at school when school is in session, my kids are out, you know? They're they're going for bike rides. They're fishing. They're jumping on the trampoline. They're going to the library. They're, they're going to the canal looking for turtles and frogs. They are out doing things. They are out doing the things that it shows in this picture, but that this picture wants you to think that homeschoolers are not doing. So I just found that really funny that they, who, you can tell that the person who came up with this graphic and this article in general really doesn't know any actual homeschooling families. I also want to point out to you the the writing on the sides of these books here. Reading, writing, arithmetic, Bible. Something that is actually really funny is that when they first released this article, they actually had the word arithmetic spelled wrong. Yes, that's right. Harvard, the Ivy League school that is constantly bashing homeschooling and saying that parents are not equipped to educate their own kids, didn't know how to spell arithmetic. And it took a lot of people on Twitter, a lot of homeschoolers, I have to say, pointing out to Harvard Magazine that they spelled arithmetic wrong and they actually went and changed it, changed it today. And I have proof of this because I do have a screenshot of the original picture. And you will see right here that, yeah, see that? They spelled arithmetic wrong. So I just found that ironic in all of this. But anyway, let's just get started reading this for a little bit. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I'm going to read the key parts, which unfortunately are a lot of parts of this article because it is so biased against homeschooling. So anyway, so I have to point out that the author is Erin... Erin O'Donnell. But what she is the what she is quoting a lot in here is Elizabeth Bartholet. I'm not sure if I said that right. I honestly I don't care if I said that right. I have very, very little respect for this woman. She is also the organizer of the anti-homeschooling summit 
coming up in June. So if you, you'll see that right here. And I did do a video also on this. Um, it says that the summit is being organized by Dwyer and Professor Elizabeth Bartholet. In Bartholet's recent article in the Arizona Law Review, Homeschooling, Parent Rights, Absolutism versus Child Rights to Education and Protection, she recommends a presumptive ban on homeschooling with the burden on parents to demonstrate justification for permission to homeschool. Well, I can tell Miss Bartholet what our justification is to homeschool, is that we are the parents. Our children do not belong to the state, so we don't need to justify homeschooling our own children. But obviously she doesn't believe that. And, you know, and I talked about this in the video about the, the summit is that all the people who are going to be speaking at this invitation only summit where they will not be presenting both sides of the issue, <laughs> go figure, but they are all anti-family. They are all anti-parental rights. Um, they're, they're just very, they're extremists. That's really what they are. They're zealots when it comes to being against anything that has to do with family, with parenting, um, homeschooling, any sort of traditional values they absolutely are against. So anyway, so it says here, yet Elizabeth Bartholet, Wasserstein Public Interest Professor of Law and Faculty Director of the Law, School Ch Law School's Child Adv Advocacy Program, sees risks for children and society in homeschooling and recommends a presumptive ban on the practice. So let's just stop right here. She sees risks for children and society in homeschooling. So I wonder if she has actually looked at the bullying that goes on in public schools or the pregnancy rates, the drugs, the student teacher relationships, the very, very low scores in, in standardized tests, which I have to say, I put no stock in them, but people like her tend to put stock in those sorts of things. I wonder if she has actually looked at the high school students who are graduating with fourth grade reading levels. So if there is any sort of issue that is going to affect society, it is the sorts of things that you see coming out of the public education system. She doesn't see that though. Okay, anyway, homeschooling, she says, not only violates children's right to a meaningful education and their right to be protected from potential child abuse, but may keep them from, cont from contributing positively to a democratic society. Again, I don't see how homeschooling is keeping them from contributing to a democratic society, especially when homeschool students are the ones who are actually out participating in society throughout their childhood, and they are not locked in a box or a building all day long. And it also says it's their right to be protected from potential child abuse. Let me just remind everyone about all of the predatory school employees that we see. And of course, we don't, we don't see her worrying about any of that. We don't see her worrying about all of the bullying that happens. The, the poor school children, fourth graders who were committing suicide because they were being bullied at school. We don't see people like her worrying about those sorts of things. Okay. So then she goes on to say that we have an essentially unregulated regime in the area of homeschooling. And she says that um, there are very few requirements in the states that parents do anything. And that is an outright falsehood. In the state where I live, we have pretty much stuff that we have to do. We have to keep a list of books. We have to homeschool for 180 days a year. We have to keep work samples in a portfolio that we then have to submit to an evaluator who looks at the samples, also interviews our kids. They also have to have standardized testing done in third, fifth, and eighth grade. Then an evaluation letter has to be typed up by the evaluator, sent into the school district. At the beginning of every year, we have to send in an affidavit. We have to send in a list of objectives. So what she is saying, yeah, you know what? There are a lot of states that have far less regulation than what our state does, but that is as it should be because I'm going to say it again. There are children. Our child's education should be none of the business of the government. That is a role that they took upon themselves that 
should not even exist. Okay, so let's just continue on. Um, that means effectively, so I'm right here, I'm just going to highlight that quick so you can see where I'm at. That means effectively that people can homeschool who have never gone to school themselves. How many people in our, in our country have never gone to school? Give me a break. Who don't read or write themselves? Well, I can honestly say that since public school is the fallback method for education, you know, not just in this country, but around the world, if people aren't reading or writing, it's because the public school system is a gigantic failure. If people aren't prepared to educate their own children, that is a failure on the part of the system that educated them in the first place, which means that we should be looking for an alternative. Okay, and then it says, in another handful of states, parents are not re required to register their children as homeschooled. They can simply keep their kids at home. And again, that's exactly as it should be. This practice, Bartholet says, can isolate children. She argues that one benefit of sending children to school at age four or five is that teachers are mandated reporters, required to alert authorities to evidence of child abuse or neglect. Teachers and other school personnel constitute the largest percentage of people who report to child protective services. That is probably because that is where those children are all day long. And I really want to point out here that I wonder how many of these teachers have actually reported inappropriate relationships between their colleagues and their students. I'm willing to bet that not a lot of teachers have been reporting that sort of thing. So, yeah, I do think that it is a concern that there are children who are abused. But there are studies that show that homeschooled children are 40% less likely to die at the hands of their parents from abuse or neglect than their peers, 40% less likely. So yeah, unfortunately, while it does happen that there are homeschooled kids who are abused, it is far more likely to happen to children who are in the public school system. And to point out all homeschoolers and to treat them as if they are all potential abusers is akin to when you were in school and your teacher would punish the entire class for something that one person did. If you are going to look at the the rates of abuse, you should you're you're better off to look at the rates of those children who are in public school and not homeschools. As an example, she points to the memoir Educated by Tara Westover, the daughter of Idaho survivalists who never sent their children to school. Although Westover learned to read, she writes that she received no other formal education at home, but instead spent her teenage years working in her father's scrap business, where severe injuries were common and endured abuse by an older brother. Okay, let's just, people love to use this example about homeschooling. This is not homeschooling. What that is, is educational neglect. So to paint all homeschoolers in a light that makes it look like they are doing these sorts of things to their children, you don't understand that this woman, Tara Westover, she was not homeschooled. Homeschoolers in most states, yes, they do have to follow regulations. There are certain things that they have to do. And I'll tell you something, those people who do keep their kids home for the sake of abuse, do you think they're going to care what the laws say about homeschooling? It's it, it's the same false argument that people use against for, for gun control. They think that if you have more gun control, that it's going to um, have less gun crimes happen. But that's not the way that it works. People who are bent on breaking the law don't care about the law. It doesn't matter what regulations you put in place. So whether it's gun control or whether it's homeschooling, when you put all of these additional regulations on these on these acts or on these industries, you are basically punishing the people who are not going to do any of these illegal things. And it completely defeats the purpose. Um. In a paper published recently in the Arizona Law Review, she notes that parents choose homeschooling for an array of reasons. Some find local schools lacking or want to protect their child from bullying. 
Others do it to give their children the flexibility to pursue sports or other activities at a high level. But surveys of homeschoolers show that a majority of such families, by some estimates up to 90%, are driven by conservative Christian beliefs and seek to remove their children from mainstream culture. Let me just stop right there and say, first of all, if that's why people are choosing to homeschool, again, it is their children and it is not the business of people like Elizabeth Bartholet. Something else that I have to say is that as someone who has a homeschool blog and who more often now has a homeschool channel, I have people from all walks of life who follow my channel, who follow my Instagram, who follow me on Twitter. I have people who are Muslim who follow me. I have secular homeschoolers who follow me. I have people of all areas who are homeschooling their children. So again, I think that it's none of her business why people are homeschooling their kids. So it could be 90%. Again, it doesn't matter. But I, I really think that that is not the exact rate. I, I think that she's just kind of guessing. Anyway, Bartholet notes that some of these parents are extreme religious ideologues who question science and promote female subservience and white supremacy. Yeah, what she is doing right now is she is talking out of her rear end and she is just she she's revealing her own biases because if you're going to talk about extreme religious ideologues we could argue that elizabeth bartholet and her colleagues who who are like-minded with her they're also extreme religious ideologues except their religion is the state their religion is government and as for questioning science, <laughs> let's not even go down that road, because I think that a lot of people like Bartholet are more into scientism and not into science. So let's not even go there. As for white supremacy, where is she getting this stuff from? She is getting this from, oh, you know what? This will probably be a good time to bring up the fact that some of the people who are coming to the summit who are from the Coalition for Responsible Home Education, they have, I think it's one of their co-founders actually has ties to Antifa. So yeah, these this woman is not objective and she is not saying things that she has done, that she has found out through research. She is saying things because she has a vendetta against homeschoolers and she will do everything that she can to make them look bad. Okay. So here it says children should grow up exposed to democratic values, ideas about non-discrimination and tolerance of other people's viewpoints. That is hilarious because what Elizabeth Bartholet is doing is discriminating. She's discriminating against homeschoolers. She's discriminating against conservative Christians. She is discriminating against parents and family and tolerance where is her tolerance? I'm not understanding how someone like her does not see the complete irony of when she says things like that. Okay. She views the absence of regulations ensuring that homeschool children receive a meaningful education equivalent to that required in public schools. <laughs> well, homeschoolers, we've got to say, usually do get a better education than those in public schools because our public schools are sorely lacking in education. Indoctrination, yeah, they're right up there, but education, not so much. From the beginning of compulsory education in this country, we have thought of the government as having some right to educate children so they, may be, so they become active, productive participants in the larger society. Well, she might think that the government has a right to educate children, but there are a lot of people who do not think that the government has a right to educate children. As for them educating children to become active, productive participants in the larger society, the whole purpose of education and the whole reason that compulsory schooling even started was to create obedient citizens who would listen to whatever the government or their superiors told them. But she, I know she knows this, but she believes that that should be the case. She is an elitist and she is looking down her nose on everyone else. So, um, and this is where she says, but it's also important that children grow up exposed to community values, social values, democratic values, ideas about non-discrimination and tolerance of other people's viewpoints. So basically what she's saying is that children should all be should all grow up to be indoctrinated with her beliefs 
And it doesn't matter what their parents or that people might not think the same that they do because the only tolerance that matters is if it is, you know, towards what she believes. Okay. In the United States, Bartholet says state legislators have been hesitant to restrict the practice because of the Homeschooling Legal Defense Association, a conservative Christian homeschool advocacy group, which she describes as small, well-organized and overwhelmingly powerful politically. What exactly does she think she's doing? She is having a summit to try to regulate homeschooling with the Coalition for Responsible Home Education, who is lobbying to, to put more regulations on homeschooling. So she can't point out the fact that Homeschool Legal Defense Association is overwhelmingly po powerful politically when that is exactly what she is trying to do. Anyway, um, let's just continue on. Bartholet maintains that parents should have very significant rights to raise their children with the beliefs and religious convictions that the parents hold but requiring children to attend schools outside the home for six or seven hours a day, she argues, does not unduly limit parents' influence on a child's views and ideas. That is ridiculous. How many children are in school longer and see their, their teachers for a longer amount of time than what they see their own parents? A lot of, of kids have parents who are working while they are in school, but they're also working for a few hours afterwards. Or these kids are going to after school programs that these schools push on these kids. And then when these kids come home, they can't have any meaningful interaction with their family because they're completing hours and hours of homework on top of everything. So I don't know where she's coming from that six or seven hours a day is not taking anything away from the parent-child relationship or a parent's influence on a child's views and ideas. She knows that that is not the case. Six or seven hours a day, five days a week, 36 weeks a year for 13 years of a child's life. Yes, that is a substantial amount of time that is being taken away from parents. The issue is, I'm just going to continue on. The issue is, do we think that parents should have 24-7 essentially authoritarian control over their children from ages 0 to 18? Well, I'm going to answer that. Yes. Maybe not necessarily authoritarian control. She makes it sound so bad. But yes, parents should be in charge of their children from 0 to 18. That is what parents are. It is the parents' responsibility to raise their kids. It is the parents' responsibility to support their kids. It is the parents' responsibility to nurture their kids and to raise them. But people like Elizabeth Bartholet don't believe that. If you've ever read the book Brave New World where, they, where the children are lo no longer raised by parents and even the words mother and father are considered taboo and they're not supposed to be saying it, that is precisely what she would love to see happen in the future is for children to not be raised by their parents but to be raised by the state. Now this next thing that she says I think is especially hilarious if you look at, let's, let's just read it. <laughs> I'm going to start right here. Okay. I think it's always dangerous to put powerful people in charge of the powerless and to give the powerful ones total authority. So she's talking about parents. She's referring to the parents as the powerful people. And she's referring to children as the powerless. But what she is completely overlooking is that she is for putting the government which is far more powerful than any parent in charge of children. So not only would the children be powerless in that scenario, but so are the parents. And that is to a far greater degree than a parent raising their own child. She wants the entire government entity to be raising children. And she doesn't think that that fits into what she just said. That it's dangerous to put powerful people. I think what she should have said is, I think it's always dangerous to put powerful people in charge of the powerless unless it's the government. I think maybe that's more accurate to what she's believing. Anyway, she concedes that in some situations, homeschooling may be justified and effective. 
No doubt there are some parents who are motivated and capable of giving an education that's of a higher quality and as broad in scope as what's happening in the public school, she says. But Bartholette believes that if parents want permission, there we go with that permission again for our own children, to opt out of schools, the burden of proving that that their case is justified should fall on parents. No, it shouldn't. They're the parents. I think an overwhelming majority of legislators and American people, if they looked at the situation, Bartholet says, would conclude that something ought to be done. No, Bartholet, only in your world would that be the case. I would say that most people understand what freedom is all about. You, on the other hand, believe the opposite, and you want the opposite for this country. Oh, and here they are, Harvard Magazine, asking for money after this very, very objective and unbiased article where they are once again bashing a way of life that three to four million homeschoolers or families are now doing. Homeschoolers perform better on tests. They have better social skills. And yeah, even places like Harvard Years ago, it was it was in um, I think it was Business Insider. I'll, I'll leave the link. And I talked about this in my other video about Harvard. They were recruiting homeschoolers. They were saying that homeschooling is the new path to Harvard. But now you've got extremist professors in Harvard who are who are really, really pushing these anti homeschooling views. And it, it is time that it stops, it's time that we speak up, and it's time that we let the world know that if there are, you know, people like her love to refer to um, conservative people as fascists. If I see any fascist behavior going on, it is from people like her. That's all that I have for you today. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet and would like to hear more of what I have to say, I would love if you would do that. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave one over on Instagram because YouTube disables my comments. And if you like my work and would like to check out my Patreon page, I will leave a link in the description box for that as well. And I hope you have a great day and keep standing up for freedom.